This is part two of our two-part special on China's reopening. There are multiple investment opportunities abound. Is the market ready to embrace a fast economic recovery in China? What does this mean for investors in this fast rebound? We have a lot to talk about in this conversation worth your 10 minutes today, only on UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore, and this is part two of our conversation on the reopening of China. And this time, I'm talking with Nadia and with Zing Chen about investment opportunities based on the reopening. So, Zing Chen, I'd like to start with you. Give us your view, the CIO view, on investment opportunities within China now that the reopening has taken place. Absolutely, Anthony. So, to start off, right, so we did upgrade Chinese equities um, in early January. The main rationale behind was, you know, first, a faster than expected reopening that can lead to a consumption-led growth rebound in contrast to the rest of the world. Well, growth is pretty much slowing in elsewhere. And second, continuous and more coordinated policy support. And three is the potential earnings growth expectation that is far higher than the rest of the emerging markets. So for instance, looking at over the next 12 months, consensus estimate expecting a you know, 15, 14 to 15% earnings growth rebound versus only you know, 2 to 3% in, for the rest of EM. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's not surprising. We were talking about this in part one, and Nadia, you mentioned a lot of pent up demand because people were, were locked in and trillions of dollars of savings on the sidelines. So not surprising to hear about the upgrade. It makes a lot of sense. But I do want to ask you, Zing Chen, because um, internet and e-commerce companies particularly are a big part of the MSCI EM index. How do they fare here? Definitely. So we, within China, right? So glad that you mentioned internet, right? Because internet e-commerce is a big chunk of the whole MSCI EM index. And the reason we think it's one of these, you know, greatest beneficiaries from, the, the, not necessarily directly from the reopening itself, but more from the consumption-led recovery. So, along with some other factors, such as we have now a more benign regulatory environment, and the ADR delisting saga, it was pretty much in the past. So, in all, all in all, we think at current valuations, the Chinese internet is a great play as a beneficiary from the rebound in activity in China. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and a lot of easing of regulatory pressures on, on those Chinese companies, internet companies as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's great. Uh, let me ask you, before we go into U.S. and Europe, what about broader EM here? Are there any investment opportunities there based on the China reopening? As we know China is an EM country itself, but there are many other countries that fall into that category. Yes, yeah, so China is plus 30 percent of you know EM looking at the MSCI EM index that's one part of the reason we did upgrade emerging market equities to most prefer a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. but not only just China right so the rest of it the 70 percent of uh, the rest of the EM also can be you know beneficiaries of this China reopening for instance you know, a lot of you know this um, uh, countries are commodity exporters and also a lot of you know, uh, com uh, these countries are you know biggest trading partners with uh, China as well. So these can all you know benefit from the potential reopening. That's why we do think playing EM as a you know both you know China reopening play and also you know as a, you know uh, their own beneficiaries as well. Yeah. Terrific, great, thank you, Zing Chen. So Nadia, when it comes to the U.S. and Europe. Um, obviously, we know that there are many, in, uh, you know, tr they're trading partners. There's a lot of implications for commodities and other sectors mm -hmm. for investing when it comes to this reopening China trade. How does that fare in the U.S. and Europe? Yeah, you know, I want to make it clear that obviously, you know, some direct investments in China over the last couple of years has been somewhat challenging for the various reasons that Xinjiang to touch upon from the role in lockdowns and COVID related restrictions um, to the regulatory environment. But it's important for us to emphasize that we do think that there's a tactical opportunity right now in China. But 
For those investors that might be a little bit hesitant to tip their dough back in directly, there's also indirect ways to play China reopening. Not only broadly in the, in, for select companies in the U.S. and Europe, but I also think in the commodity complex as mm -hmm. well. Remember, China is 50 percent of global metals. You know, China is also over 25 percent of global energy. And so when you, we think about the demand for energy this year, you know, the IEA expects to see record demand for energy this year. And over about half of that is going to come from an incremental pickup in, in China. Mm -hmm. So I think that the commodity complex is a way to play it, you know, whether that is through U.S. companies or European companies. Yeah, well, it'll, this will boost some of those commodity-sensitive economies, as you're saying, right? Absolutely, and, and, and this is part of the reason why we upgraded EM, those commodity-linked EM countries as well. But I, 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 I want to make, emphasize that we're not just talking about oil, we're talking about broad commodities because we also think about the industrial metals mm -hmm. like copper. We should see a pickup in the demand for copper. You know, there's going to be more invested in grid infrastructure projects in China. There's also going to be more investment probably around EV, and all of these things will increase the demand for copper. And so there's an opportunity in broad commodities. I would say more specifically to um, like Europe, for example, like we actually recently launched a European consumer recovery theme. And one of the theses behind this is around China re reopening. There is increased demand for luxury goods. We've already seen that increased demand for autos and travel, as we talked about in terms of more people traveling into Europe. And so we think the consumer discretionary sector and the consumer stable sector within Europe should benefit. Remember, European countries actually have the second largest exposure to China from a regional basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, clearly the recovery in consumption goods is something that uh, makes a lot of sense considering, as you were saying in the part one, as I mentioned earlier, there's so much pent up demand. People haven't really been able to go out. Certainly travel has not happened at all. Um, but a lot of goods, people don't go clothing shopping mm -hmm. when they're at home. There's no need to go buy anything more than your sweatpants and pajamas, yes. as we discovered yes. in 2020. Yes. So this makes sense. This makes sense. And Anthony, on your next trip to Italy, when you are going to buy those luxury items, the lines might be long there too, or they might be sold out as a result of the Chinese consumer. And I would say here at home in the US, you know, like there are U.S. companies that also are benefited from the reopening in China, and there's a way to access that as well. Um, particularly when you think about some of the casinos companies, those that have exposure to Macau, those are going to benefit. And all of the brand name restaurants that we have in the U.S. that have exposure directly in China is also going to benefit. And remember, most of the oil companies are here in the U.S. and the industrial metals companies. So we actually launch a theme that is called the U.S. China reopening theme that has a list of stocks, U.S. listed stocks that we think will benefit from the reopening of China. And you also have a preference for Thailand in this new, uh, in your new research, correct? Yes, in terms of a broader EM, as Xing Shen talked about earlier, we recently upgraded broader EM on the thesis of that we expect to see more cross-border travel to some of those Southeast Asian countries, and a country like Thailand should benefit from that increased tourism. Terrific. Yeah, I would love to be on the beaches in Thailand myself right now. So, <laughs> but thank you. This is uh, what a great conversation. And if anybody missed part one of our chat, um, take, take a look, I'll, I'll, I'll take a view of that. But uh, I want to thank you both for being here with me. Today today. Great conversation and great stuff here. Uh, really appreciate you both coming by. Thank you. Great. Thank you, thank you Nadia. Thank you. thank you, Zing Chen. And for those of you who would like more information, please visit our website at ubs.com forward slash views. Plus, you can check out all of our content on social media, as well as all of our past UBS trending episodes on demand. Uh, you can go to our website, ubs.com forward slash studios or the UBS YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions about what we spoke about today, particularly when it comes to investing in your portfolio, make sure to speak to your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great rest of your day, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending, everybody. We'll see you soon.